fire is raging. Smoke rises from the treetops of Wabonzi Woods. The Riverside Brookfield Ecology Club is hard at work. For the past six years, students from Riverside Brookfield High School have been working to remove the invasive species known as buckthorn from the enclosure and restore Wabonzi Woods to a fully functioning prairie. I think it's an amazing opportunity to have a restoration project so close to a high school so students can see um, the interaction of how a community is going to respond to those restoration efforts as you clear out that brush and reintroduce fire into that ecosystem allowing those native plants to come back. Uh, it's, it's a really cool project and it shows a really great dedication from the volunteer leader and all the, the crew of volunteers that have been out there doing that. The the fact that both Walbansi and Zoo Woods are adjacent to Riverside Brookfield High School makes an ideal open air laboratory in which students and even the interns who are mostly college students have an opportunity to see up close, personal and firsthand exactly how ecological restoration works. The Ecology Club at uh, Riverside Brookfield High School is exceptional. The kids know what it's about. Um, the sponsors, the two, two sponsors that I know, Dave Monty and Mike Cookbazer, the two of them, they know what it's all about. Um, the kids love it, the sponsors love it. The work that they've done there is phenomenal and it's all from volunteer hours. A lot of kids come and we all have our own job that day, whether it be, you know, we have um, we're cutting down the buckthorn or we're throwing it into the pile to get ready to burn it and sometimes we don't even burn it that day but it always a lot gets done and they're really helpful. It, it's, it's actually a very amazing feeling to to see what the kids have accomplished in the last 20 years. Their energy, their enthusiasm for what we're doing mm -hmm. is, is just remarkable and uh, I always love the look on their faces at the end of the day um, you know, we've been working for three hours and, and you just take a look over the, over where we've worked and it's just, it's just a great sense of accomplishment. Although continued work and attention are necessary for Wabonsi to prosper, promising changes have already been observed. With an organization like the Ecology Club here at RB, um, I mean, if it stays this strong, I mean, well, Bansi look is it's night and day, even from two years ago, let alone five years ago. So um, I'm, you know, extremely confident of the work that the Ecology Club is doing here. Well, Bansi, when we started there, was essentially a buckthorn desert. It was literally impossible to walk in a straight line or walk erect through any part of the site. And we began uh, when we discovered a small prairie remnant in the exact center of the site. So from there we worked outward in ever increasing concentric circles until we now have achieved a point at which there is simply a tonsure of buckthorn around the entire site. And everything within the site, except for a few uh, remnant stands of buckthorn or some re sprouts, uh, has been practically cleared of the buckthorn infestation and been replaced in many places with either functioning prairies or growing savannas. The area is basically responding to sunshine and you're seeing a, an early response of, of a, a suppressed habitat uh, going through perhaps atypical successional changes. It's responding to the openness and there are a lot of different species that are struggling to attain dominance there and uh, that's all happening in a relatively short amount of time since it's been essentially released. You know, we've been working there about six years and a lot of the native plants have already started to come back. A lot of those plants have bulbs or corms which are, which are 
bigger than seeds and so they can stay dormant for much longer periods of time. So we've seen some really neat things already sprout up. The big issue right now is we still have deer and so the deer come in and they don't eat the buckthorn but they like eating the native stuff that's sprouting up. And so now that's kind of the big battle is trying to keep the deer away from some of these really rare and endangered plants but uh, that's really hard to do. Interns and volunteers strive to protect the native species of Wabanzi while they still have a chance. Yet the amount of work which lays before them is as immense as the forest itself. Beyond the borders of the prairie, new problems spring up with each passing day. Problems which are quickly proving to be as pervasive as the buckthorn itself. People that don't understand restoration they sometimes will uh, protest what we're doing. You know, why are we cutting down these trees? They don't understand the, that these trees are not supposed to be there. Even if it's pretty, it's not a bush that belongs here. It's a bush, or sometimes they're trees now, that need to be uh, removed so that the other uh, native plants can thrive. There are uh, value systems that are in conflict and very often uh, the efforts at restoration is a value system that is not often shared by those people that live in close proximity to it. And the reason for that that I feel is, is because uh, a sense of value is created by the neighbors of these locations that when they see changes they see that value lost and they don't understand the other value that's being put in its place. You can't have a village without an idiot, and we have one. Two of the most annoyingly pleasant and congenial people I know went and talked to him and explained at tedious length what we were doing there and what the, the importance of the work was. And a week later, he came running up to me screaming, you're killing all of our good trees and you made a meadow. Well, of course, we aren't killing his good trees. We're wiping out buckthorn and a few green ash that are out where the meadow should, in the prairie where they shouldn't be. And we did not create a meadow, we created a prairie. And the difference between a prairie and a meadow uh, is the difference between a village resident and a village idiot. In some ways, um, we need to educate the public more about what we're doing, um, and then people understand why, you know, why, we're, why we're doing that work. Apart from the numerous benefits it provides the environment, the type of work which goes on at Wabanzi also plays a major role in strengthening the ties young volunteers have towards nature. The schools really have a perfect um, situation because they get these kids five days a week um, you know, however many weeks through the year, and so they can instill a love of nature uh, while the kids are in the classroom, outside of the classroom, during school time. Much of what passes for ecological education essentially consists of studying for an advanced placement test. Unfortunately, much of what is learned in ecological restoration is out there day after day, week after week, month after month, observing and working with evolving ecological systems. So as a teacher, it's great to see students outside um, and able to get out of the classroom and apply the concepts that they are learning in the classroom, um, whether that's taking a walk through a forest and identifying trees or doing um, sampling of that forest to try and describe the community. It gives students a much better appreciation for these abstract concepts that we're learning in the classroom and see how they relate to something that's right around them. If you get kids young interested in playing in the dirt and not being afraid of the dirt um, and handling plants and not being afraid um, to touch plants, the younger you can go the better. And in particular the schools have an excellent opportunity to add that to their curriculum um, then every kid gets it. 
when you talk to people and say, well, why is it that you care about the environment? Why are you interested in environmental issues? Most people will tie it back to an event um, from their past to say, oh, well, my dad used to take me hiking, or I would always go um, out to this particular forest with my mother, or my friends and I would always go to this particular mountain or something. People tie um, their their care for the environment back to experiences they've had. So being able to provide students with the opportunity to do that during class time should give them um, a stronger tie to the environment later in life. I think I've gained a lot of knowledge and it's also just a great you know, way that you learn. You can easily help out and you can easily just make small changes in your life that will help. So that's really what I've gained. Although the future of Wabonzi Woods remains uncertain, with the efforts of the Ecology Club, anything is possible. If we just let the things that we've done take their course, you know, a lot of native things are going to go extinct, and so we need to get involved and, and try to correct the mistakes that we've made in terms of bringing over these plants that we should have never brought over in the first place. Perhaps some of the young people that are involved in it will adopt it because none of us are here forever and that area will be here a whole lot longer than uh, so many of the rest of us. So, I think that the easiest thing to do, and they do this at RB through the Ecology Club, is just get the kids outdoors. Um, doesn't even have to be in a prairie that is being try, you know, trying to restore. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy like that. It could just be, let's go outside and look at what plants are, you know, near the school. Even though PBS is showing something that has grandeur a thousand miles away, uh, you can find that just in your own backyard. I mean, nature is, exists all around you. Nature is all around us. It whispers to us on the long wind, beckoning, pleading not to be so easily forgotten or undervalued. Change can happen. This much has already been proven. Yet the question of whether or not we choose to act is something which we must ultimately look within ourselves to find the answer to. For the actions of one individual can inspire immeasurable change. Even great trees begin with seeds.